Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex because I wanted to talk a little bit about Plex servers and how to pick the right one for your particular situation. And we're going to be focusing on lower cost server options, including the NVIDIA Shield, a cheap uh, mini PC like this one, a network attached storage device, and even maybe something like an old laptop. Basically finding uh, the best solution based on what you need and what your budget is. And a lot has happened over the last year or two in relation to how lower cost machines can act as really effective Plex servers. So I thought it'd be good to explore this topic a bit this month. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving this video before it is uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get to it now and see what some of your options are and how to decide what you need. Now, a couple of years ago, I did a video called Plex 101, where I detailed Plex from top to bottom, and I made some recommendations on Plex servers. Now, back then, I suggested having a PC be your Plex server, uh, because a lot of other low-cost devices weren't very effective at that. Uh, that has changed quite a bit, but there are some areas where you still need to uh, make some decisions. Uh, so right now, I've got a Plex server running on this Synology DS218J. And in full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Synology a little while back for a video we were working on with them. Uh, they're an occasional sponsor here on the channel. Now, in my home with my iPad Pro, I can get movies to play off of that Plex server installed on this device uh, without issue. In fact, I've got two movies running right now. Uh, these are both Blu-ray MKV movies, so they're very high bit rate. They're running at 1080p, and because both of these tablets can play back this video without having any need to transcode it or make it smaller to play, uh, we're able to get this to work just fine. And if you're using, uh, for example, an NVIDIA Shield in your house hooked up to your TV, along with some modern PCs and tablets to watch media, and you never plan on leaving the house to watch the media, then something like this low-cost device might just do the trick for you because it's just basically passing the file through and you gain the benefit of all of Plex organizational tools uh, to organize your media. And if that's all you need, then that's probably all you need. You can buy this $185 NAS, put some disks in it, and you're off and running. But if you want to transcode media to watch media when you're outside of the home or maybe on a lower powered device, uh, then you're going to need something that supports hardware transcoding. Now we're going to spend a lot of time on transcoding in this video, so I thought it'd be helpful just to walk through exactly what it means. Uh, so right now we're playing back two Blu-ray files to two different tablets at about 20 to 40 megabits per second each. Now if I wanted to watch this outside of my home, I would need an internet connection at least that fast in order to play back these movies at full speed. Uh, my internet connection here is about uh, half of the minimum here, only 10 megabits per second. Uh, so I really can't play this over the internet if I just ran it out at the full bit rate. But what I can do is have the Plex server transcode it. In other words, make that large 20 to 40 megabit per second file into something that runs at only one to two megabits per second. And then wherever I am in the world, I should be able to uh, pull that data out of my server over the internet and be able to watch that on my phone, for example. Uh, the quality won't be as good, of course, because we are reducing it in size significantly, but I can access that media and watch it. And that's why a device like this lower cost NAS will fall short because it doesn't have the ability to do that transcoding in hardware to speed it up. So when you click on the play button, uh, the Plex software is going to do the transcoding, which means that you'll be waiting a very long time for that movie to actually start playing, if at all. You'll just see a spinning wheel going for a while. And for a long time, that was how every NAS worked with Plex. They just weren't good uh, for serving Plex outside of the home. But they've made some changes, and if you have a Plex Pass account, uh, you can enable hardware transcoding on specific uh, NAS models. And they've got this spreadsheet that I have up right now where you can do some research to see uh, which NAS devices support this. And there's now a growing number of them that do. So you can see here in the hardware accelerated transcoding section of the spreadsheet, anything that's got yes here uh, by 1080p is something that will probably give you a decent performance for playing back uh, 1080p content. You're not going to have the same performance on 4K content, so just bear that in mind, but uh, you can get a QNAP, 
an Asus store. Uh, they also have Synology that supports this now in addition to Western Digital devices. And again, you just want to check and make sure that the NAS you're looking for is on that list of supported devices that have that hardware transcoding feature built in. And if they do and you've got a Plex Pass, uh, you're going to be able to have just a single device that you can put away somewhere, handle all of your Plex media, and it will work just fine. Now, personally, I'm using a WDPR2100 network attached storage device. Uh, that device sits in my equipment closet over there on top of my old Apple IIe, and it delivers media to my entire home, so all my TVs, all my tablets, it runs all my Plex media, but it also is my HD Home Run DVR server as well. And I've never had a situation where it's been overloaded, even when my wife is watching something, I'm watching something, and my kids are watching something else, and it's recording stuff, it just handles all of it. And it's been a very, very good experience, and it's nice to have such a compact, relatively low-powered device do all of that, and I can just set it up and forget about it. Uh, there's no PC to monitor there. Uh, but you might not want to spend as much as those devices cost. A lot of these NAS devices that support hardware transcoding uh, can start at around $500 and quickly escalate from there. And the interesting thing is that a lot of the processors inside of those NAS boxes can now be found on low-cost mini PCs. Uh, this is one example of it. Uh, we looked at the uh, Intel NUC a few months ago, the J5005 NUC. Uh, you can get that with a hard drive and memory now for like $285. It's got the same guts as those NAS devices do for the most part, and it supports hardware transcoding. And if you take a look at the video we shot with that NUC testing out its Plex capabilities, it does very, very well for the price point. And if you're really trying to keep your budget in, in check, this is probably the way to go. It's not hard to get it set up. It's kind of a fun project. You can even run Linux on it if you want to avoid the uh, Windows licensing fees. Maybe we'll do a video on setting up uh, Plex on Linux in the future so you can check that out. It's a very good solution. And again, uh, not very expensive. You can load up all your media on an external hard drive or RAID array and uh, you've got yourself effectively a NAS for half the price. And another low cost option is at the bottom of the stack here, an old PC or laptop. I've got an old Sony Vio here that's about five years old. Uh, it doesn't do too well with modern Windows 10 stuff, but it does great as a Plex server because its processor inside, the Intel processor, uh, does support hardware transcoding. Uh, what Plex uses on these Intel processors is something called QuickSync. And I've got a link to a page here on Intel's website where they list every single processor that supports it. And this particular laptop has an i7-3537U uh, processor. So it's a third generation i7. Maybe it's not so bad of a device after all here. And you can see it is on the list of supported QuickSync devices. And if your device has this QuickSync support, whether it's a NAS or a PC, uh, then you should have a decent time with hardware transcoding. The number of streams you can transcode simultaneously will obviously vary based on the computer, but you can see even going back to 2011, uh, there was QuickSync support. And so even some of these older i3 and i5 processors should be able to get the job done for you. And again, just check that list before you buy, but if it's on the list, it supports Intel QuickSync and you should be in good shape. Uh, that said, AMD processors don't have quick sync, so an older AMD-based device will not perform as well unless maybe it's got an NVIDIA GPU or something inside of it. But then we're getting into complex territory here. We're just trying to find quick and easy and cheap solutions, and an old PC uh, might just do the trick for you. And that Intel website will also be helpful if you are looking at a NAS device that is not yet in the NAS compatibility spreadsheet. Uh, we looked at a few minutes ago. So if you figure out what processor it's running and it's an Intel processor, uh, go over to the spreadsheet and take a look and see if you can find the chip on the list here. And one thing I've noticed is that some of like the mid-tier NAS devices with Intel processors don't actually have QuickSync support on the chips inside. Uh, that's because those Intel chips are geared for other types of tasks beyond media serving and they pulled the QuickSync support out of them. 
So again, that list is really invaluable for figuring out whether or not the NAS you're looking at uh, supports it because some of the top end NAS devices don't actually support QuickSync even though they have a recent Intel processor. So again, just do your homework. It's really uh, important. Now the last low cost option to think about is the NVIDIA Shield. I've got the 16 gigabyte shield in my hand right now. They're very high performing Android TV boxes. They're great for retro emulation and playing games and whatnot in addition to all the media you might want to see. And we did a video about a year or two ago about how the NVIDIA Shield performs as a Plex server. We found that it can do hardware transcoding and still provide access to all of its media playback options at the same time. But I did note it was getting bogged down a bit when it was doing two streams plus playing something back locally. Uh, these things really aren't designed to be servers, so you might find some glitchiness going on, especially if you're storing your media somewhere else on the network. Uh, but they have made it easier for the 16 gigabyte shield to work as a Plex server. You can offload now all the metadata to an external drive, uh, whereas before you had to store everything on it, and sometimes that metadata would fill the whole thing up completely. Uh, there is a version of the shield that has a 500 gigabyte hard drive built in. That's called the Shield Pro. And that one might be something to look at. But I typically just don't recommend using the Shield as a Plex server. It's not really designed to be a server. And as such, you're probably going to have more glitches than you might with a network attached storage device, for example, that is just designed to work as a server. And my WD drive really is, is flawless. That thing just runs 24 seven. I haven't had any problems with it. And I think you would experience similar things with an older PC or a mini PC also running with the Plex server. Again, the Shield might give you some trouble uh, over time. Now, I did want to show you where the settings are for the transcoder to make sure that you have hardware transcoding enabled uh, if you have the Plex Pass and your device supports it. So in the settings screen, you want to click on transcoder when you're on the web version of the product. And you can see here, I've got nothing in here for options beyond the fact that I can choose the number of simultaneous video streams I can do. So if you click on advanced here, uh, you'll then see an option for use hardware acceleration when available. And then after you check this, uh, my suggestion would be to restart the Plex server or just reboot your NAS device because otherwise the hardware acceleration won't work. You've got to start the server back up again for this feature to get initiated. And that's what's tripped up a lot of people who've written into me over the last couple of months is that they turned it on but didn't reboot the server. And that uh, is why it didn't start working for them. Uh, and once you do reboot and you are up and running, you will be uh, able to do the hardware transcoding. And right now I'm actually playing a uh, movie on my computer here. It's a Star Wars movie and we are transcoding uh, to a lower bit rate right now, both the uh, audio and video here. And you can see that the uh, transcoding here has this HW in parentheses and that means that it is using hardware to decode the video and hardware to encode the video, which means we're getting a very quick playback performance here of this film. And if we weren't uh, using hardware encoding for this particular stream, uh, you wouldn't have that HW there. So there, there's where you'll see uh, whether or not your hardware settings are in fact working or not. So you've got a lot more low cost Plex server options now, including mini PCs like this one. Uh, you'll want to look for a Gemini Lake powered mini PC, in my opinion. I think that's the best way to go. And I don't have the NUC anymore, but that NUC that I reviewed uh, is probably the one I would look at. It's again, 285 bucks right now on Amazon bundled with RAM and storage. Uh, you can put Linux on it or just install Windows and it will work really well. We tested it with both Windows and Linux in my uh, review I did a few months ago. It worked great and it's a full-fledged PC on top of all of that. You can't beat the price on it. Uh, but other ones like this little fanless Leva mini PC we're going to be looking at a little later uh, next week on the channel uh, should work well too. I like the Gemini Lake chips for that, so look for that chipset. NVIDIA Shield works. Even uh, old PCs you got kicking around the house, check out its Intel processor and see if it supports QuickSync and you'll uh, have a good go at that. Uh, if you are using the Plex DVR, uh, it does transcode everything it brings in because everything you record off of the antenna, for example, comes in as MPEG-2 at the moment. It then converts that to H.264 and it needs transcoding to do that, especially for live TV. 
Uh, so that's where if you're running a NAS box like this one that doesn't support hardware transcoding, uh, the, the DVR performance in Plex is not all that great or really not good at all, <laughs> um, given the lack of that hardware transcoding. So again, do your research, see what works for you. Let me know if I missed anything you'd like to see covered in a future video down below in the comments. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.